Okay. I have my GoPro set up. Hopefully this thing will work. What I thought I was doing, and I'm in my practice area, uh, I've got my MFD on uh, PFD, so maybe you might be able to see it a little bit better. Uh, disconnecting the autopilot. And I thought what I'd do is uh, do a few straw, uh, stalls. I'm in a uh, practice area that I use and that the local flight schools use a lot. And I've already done some clearing turns and done some clearing to see if there's anything out here. It is a little bit bumpy today, so it might be uh, hard to, to see the stalls um, um, develop, but we'll see how it goes. And uh, what we're going to do is uh, going to do a couple of straight-ahead stalls, and we'll see what else we can uh, make out uh, if it uh, works okay. Um, one thing that I, on this G3X that I... Uh, need to remember to do is to turn off this electronic stability protection because with that on um, it fights the control stick and uh, it makes the stalls look even worse. I'll turn the flight director off for now and uh, let's go ahead and uh, develop a stall real quick and you can see um, this is mostly a cockpit view. I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring the throttle back and one of the things that uh, is very obvious in a uh, canard airplane, especially the velocity, is the stalls are very, very gentle. And so what will end up happening is it just kind of porpoises uh, up and down. Um, with the configuration that I have right now, which is retractable gear, um, this should stall right around 65, 67 knots. Um, so uh, it's getting pretty close to that now so you can see it just starting to develop and there here goes a stall there's a stall right there it's starting to well it's trying to there you go it's bouncing up and down a little bit there you go up and down that's what it does and when you're up at altitude like this it's very easy to recover all you got to do is let go of the stick which just unload a little bit and it just recovers. If you're uh, down close to the ground and it stalls, there you go. It's pretty bumpy out here today, but and it stalls, all you gotta do is just give it a little thrust. And it's always best to unload it if you can um, so that it doesn't uh, develop into anything else. And to the left and to the right and one of the other things that we would uh, like to see is probably a, a turning stall and which is more like an accelerated stall here again uh, when you're in uh, the pattern altitude and I'm going to just go ahead and pull it back to idle and if you get in tight try to yank it around, it's important to recognize what a stall is going to look like. So here I am right about 80 knots, I'm turning, and I just yank it. And you can, you can start, you can start, I can start to feel it stalling right there. And even though I'm doing 90, 90 knots, you can feel it. You feel it bouncing up and down. That's kind of why it's so dangerous in uh, this airplane, although the stalls are so gentle that it just you can be confused that it's just normal turbulence and you're actually in a stalled situation even though you are in a stalled situation uh, as long as you don't snap it it's not really all that bad you just got to be able to recognize it another thing that people like to um, talk about and especially when you're doing emergency landings, uh, and I'm doing clearing turns during all of this, but especially when you're doing emergency um, landings, is being able to slip it. And there's two ways of slipping. One, of course, is a straight-ahead slip, which in a velocity is not that bad. You can do a straight-ahead slip. You just got to, again, recognize uh, a stall. So let's just go ahead and do a straight ahead slip.
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pull the thrust back. And if you look at... Let's just look at the normal a normal descent. How about that? We'll look at that first, okay? Right around 80 knots here. Um, let's get it up to about 85, 90. And we'll see what... Well, it's wants to hold right here, so let's hold that. 83 knots, and I'm doing right around... Uh, eight, nine hundred feet per minute. Okay, so now let's go ahead and slip it a little bit. So I'll roll wing, wing left. And... Yeah, see, <laughs> the rudder is very effective. Wanted to roll out on me. Okay, there I got full air on. And we're s slipping, and I'm down about 1,500, almost 2,000 uh, on the descent. It's kind of hard to hold because the rudder is actually pretty effective. So if you get the wing down a little bit more, then you're not doing a straight-ahead slip. So let's, while we're doing this, let's go ahead and do a little turning slip. And the, the problem with this is you want to make sure you don't fall out that wing because it'll do what it just did right there. See, let's do it again. Get it, and it'll turn. And now we're going to slip it. And you can see that wing wants to drop off because the up wing is, is uh, stalling out on us. And that's why slipping in a um, velocity is not recommended because that upwing will uh, snap on you, especially if you hit it really bad. And um, it's hard to recognize when it's actually stalling on you. But you can see, you can do it. It's not uh, something that's recommended. And you notice that I'm doing it pretty high, so... Um, I don't normally ever slip the airplane in pattern. I don't normally ever have to. Um, but if you ever did, in an emergency situation like out here, we lose an engine, and you need to slip it to get down there, you need to kind of know how to do it. So that's uh, slips and some stalls. And let me get this thing climbing out again. <laughs> 